and we're back. So this time we got an advanced screening for Annihilation. Thank you, Eighth Dimension Comics. Thank you, Sam. So uh, Thank you, Sam. yeah, yeah, we have the return of Alex Gardlin, the Ex Machina director. He also screenplay wrote this, and it's based off uh, Jeff Vandermeer's trilogy, Area X, Book One. Okay, so there could be two more. Yes. I think from what I read, Alex Garland didn't read second and third one. Mm -hmm. So people already are complaining about like white people. Because apparently in the second and third book, you get to know about the characters more. And people are like, they're not white. But like, if you read the first one, it's not clear who, what type of people they are. They don't yeah. even have names in this movie. So yeah. people call me. But anyways, uh, we got the return of uh, Natalie Portman. So here's a big fan. Yes, so looking forward to your performance. I don't know, I'm so bad with names. Okay. But anyways, there's more people. It's uh, From reviews, it's supposed to be crazy, intense, um, really great pacing and everything, all that stuff. So, good uh, for a very cold night. Yes, so, so there, there's all that plus. So I look forward to this. And um, yeah, stupid uh, distributor. You know, people are not dumb. They can take this. Because cause, like, it's been delayed for so long because people think that this movie is too smart for people, which is oh. just dumb. Okay. But anyways, uh, we look forward to this. We cannot wait. Uh, this is before and this is after. We, we got a new budget. We have chairs and tables now in our studio yeah. outdoors. But anyway, holy crap. Okay, first of all, I think studio execs were right. This movie is too smart for people because I totally missed what he caught. So that's that's all I'm gonna say. Let's just say, just be careful when you're watching this movie. Okay, but hey, anyways, yeah. I would say pacing wise, like it was really action packed in the first part. It's like a video game where you're thrown into like a war zone. You don't know what's happening, yeah. and then you were like kind of a survival horror kind of vibe, but you have to go go from like checkpoints to checkpoints. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like safe houses to safe houses to make sure everyone is safe. And then, you know, there were things happen. Mm -hmm. You know, people die. Yeah. Spoiler. Um, people have to die. Afterwards, uh, things just got really slow paced. And when Portman kind of uh, went into to, to like the final part of the, 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 the setting. And it was really, I would say, daring because some people might not be able to take in the abstract. Yes. Uh, scenes and dialogues. That's could. why I feel <laughs> there needs to be an extra person to make this more general audience friendly. To, to play that trope, just to be a red shirt type of thing. Because I okay. feel like, like you said, you think it's too, maybe one too many characters already. Yeah, but, but that's just my have taste. Five though. women in this movie, and I feel like I think I'm, I find I, I I enjoyed it. I think everyone sort of like came out and just did what they did. Their character arcs were done. I mean, everyone was like broken and the storytelling, the narrative pacing, everything was great. But I feel like as a general audience person, I'm thinking for them, is that if you had more cannon fodder, it will be more like intense. We're so skewed now in a day where like every death to matter is, it's, that never happens. Cause we have so many type of these like video game like movies where people just keep dying left and right. And you're like, oh, mm -hmm. who cares? Yeah. But then like this one, it's literally anyone that dies is like, that's it. We have five people and we're going forward. Yeah. It's like there's costs and repercussions and all that. So I think it's not very general audience friendly in that sense. Cause you're, you'll be like, what, what, that's it? That, 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 what? what? It's definitely not for everyone because people no. just die like, just like that. And like, there's like, there's like umph behind it, as in like one person gone from the team, the whole team feels it. And mm -hmm. plus, it's a cool thing that they switched up the tropes that like, these aren't like all military guys. We just have Natalie Portman who's been like in the army for like seven years, everyone else can pick up their own slack, they can carry a gun type of thing, but they're yeah. still scientists first, yes. and they're women as well. So it's like a different thing on the screen, because I feel like this movie, if you made it 10 years ago, all men. And, and they'll be all army people, mm -hmm. but then they can still do the whole like getting picked <laughs> off one by one, but it's different here because it's women and scientists. And I feel that brings a total different ball game to the screen here because it's like, you feel them responding. But I mean, even though they subvert the trope, 
how they respond is very atypical of like a, a team going in and getting picked off one by one. Mm -hmm. But it feels much more genuine, and it doesn't feel like oh my god, like another one of these movies. Like one of the women sort of freaks out, and this is typical because of you know the mental strain on type of mm -hmm. these kind of movies. But she's been freaking out throughout the film, though. So it was kind of not just oh suddenly she just that's went true. crazy. She yeah. just went so so like when it's person. done, like that's what I'm saying in a sense. Like screenplay and writer-wise, it's like set up to the point where when it goes down, you're like, okay, we've seen this a billion yeah. times, but it's it done. Makes sense. It, makes it makes sense. Like she was like on edge the whole movie and her character type of that thing. Because like there's a lot of movies where it's like zombie films, like oh I got bit, don't tell anybody, and then yeah, and then they freak out or something, and you're like, why? Like, but the crazy thing is they didn't get bit, but they're just in. Yeah, that was the cool part, yeah. and I real really love. Yeah, we can start talking about that. Like the whole setting itself, like the the mind of Jeff Vandermeer to like come up with this. Like, I mean, the whole setting is not new. We have like sort of enclosed spaces, yeah. messed up, unknown type of thing. But the actual details of this storyline is new and actually fresh. And you're like, okay, anything can go when DNA is involved. Yeah. And, and I love how it's incorporated into the narrative of how like Natalie Portman's a biologist. So like when she actually talks about it, it's not like. Why are we even talking about this? Why are you monologuing? Why are you telling us it's still showing? Yeah. But rather, she's like, literally, like, guys, we are changing, and yeah. that's my expertise. And I love how it's like, when they talk about things, it's it's because they know their stuff. It's not just like, hey, I'm audience, just, listen to I this. I know, let me explain what's because going down. Because she's explaining to the rest of the crew as yeah, well, and who's then, walking. Who's and, then, and it makes listening. sense that they're not informed, because they're totally different fields. We have like a cop, a, a medic, a site, um, Psychologist, psychiatrist. A, a psychologist and a physicist. So they're, they're different brands of science and they recognize that. Like I hate movies where it's like same setting type of thing and everyone goes in being like debrief but yet some one person knows everything. Like I'm looking at you Interstellar, no, stop sciencing no. the crap out of everything when you're all scientists. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I enjoyed the narrative. I do am looking forward to reading like three books. I did hear, don't read all three. At, at like one go like okay. actually break it up so I know there's a trilogy book out there that you can buy and it saves you tons of money don't read it all in one go okay I have a buddy who read that and he's like it, it feels off but if you read it as like a book as it's been released time spent between you, okay. you get to digest it a lot more all right all right so there's that and I'm totally down reading this book because it's just like makes me like really wonder how the narrative was written because in this one, there's a lot of time jumping back and forth, and you don't know what's going on. Yeah, and um, that totally lends itself to the whole narrative of like the reveal of like what's gonna go down, mm -hmm. and really, really fixes the whole like unreliable narrative done before. But this one is done well, and it's like, can you catch it? Will you catch it? Yes. I'm gonna confess that I didn't catch it because I was thinking about <laughs> something else. And this what guy, were you thinking about? I, I told you, like we're not okay. gonna talk about it here because it's just like you gotta experience and it. Then I, and then I was like, oh, I was. He thought it was right, super obvious. Right at the end, I was like, oh, I saw that mouse. Ma and away. I thought he was talking about something else. And then like, that I knew was like super obvious. But and this I was one, like, yeah, I'm like Sam. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> say it's information, <laughs> information going instead of something else. But anyways, yeah. Portman, great job. Really gave off that Ripley vibe. The Ripley at the end, yeah, yeah she does. So, so it's like, man, will she even be the next Charlize Theron, like ramping it up with the action sequences? Wow. Okay. Hopefully not. So yeah, like I think the cast brought their game. Portman leading, uh, great presence, and the atmosphere really lends itself. Um, in terms of just like cinematography, yeah. narrative. But anyways, the actress is Jennifer Jason Leigh, who is from Hateful Eight. Yep. Really great. I mean, she did what she needed to do because it just like drove home the whole like I'm gonna die, mm -hmm. uh, and it's interesting for me because I watched her in Atypical, a Netflix show recently. So it's just really interesting to see her on the big screen. Mm -hmm. And then we got Gina Rodriguez. I don't I haven't seen her in anything. No, me neither. <laughs> so she, she she did well. I mean, she had good she was like. Great. She was the person. It was who never went like I crazy. think all, everybody there was never like oh my goodness this is so overact or just awkward acting. So decent acting all around. Yep. Tessa Thompson. A different portrayal of what she did in Ragnarok, so it's just more like soft-spoken and more reserved. Yeah, more of a weak character. Weak character. Uh, weak we got this Tuva Novin Novotny. I don't. Know, I don't. Know, she sounds Russian. I don't know. Okay. No Swedish. Sorry. And then we got Oscar Isaac and uh, Benedict Wong. Benedict Wong just like talks, so that's not much from him. But like, yeah, Oscar Isaac, he's here and there. 
Um, I think the biggest thing for me is just like the, the mood and the atmosphere, the soundtrack, like you were saying, it's really great. It's really eerily like unsettling. Like yes. it's really neutral. It, when and you listen to it, it's very neutral. But then, like when you listen to it, like in the three minute span of like a whole scene, oh, it yeah. feels really unsettling. And and I think like where it goes in this film can really it's that balance of being cheesy '80s sci-fi mm-hmm. and like oh my goodness, this is intense. Yeah. Like I don't know if you guys watch The Void. The Void is like that. It's like a slasher film but at the end something goes like crazy and you're like it becomes an 80s just cheesy sci-fi mm-hmm. or or maybe the witch the witch does a really good ending where it's just like it's so like you do not expect it but it's so messed up you're like oh my goodness this this evil and then at the same time it's not, i wouldn't say it's evil here but it's just that that realization of what's at the end of the road type yeah. of thing. And you're like holy it's so like out of the park that you're like dude what is this the final review like it kind of made me reminded me of 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 alien that's yeah well it is literally something yeah so yeah i mean overall enjoyed it great atmosphere great shots and it's just doing whatever they have i mean like the sets itself it's pretty generic but Mm -hmm. then they build it up with all the like the DNA restructuring and all mm-hmm. the plant life and all that stuff and it's like really cool sequence of this thing where they find in the pool that was yeah. pretty cool some people were disgusted like I heard people were saying ew or like because there is some really really graphic like violent scene where you see like organs parts yeah, organs or like around or like you see like monsters devouring like but I mean granted person. we're in a free a mass screening where it's like tons of different people that <laughs> aren't a target audience coming in yeah um so yeah anyways it, it's it's awesome that we have this film i cannot wait to check out like the books mm-hmm. and really hoping that this makes enough money so the sequels come out and uh i do wonder it, would you want garland to do the sequel i don't know we'll see how how much money this movie makes yeah. since you said it's not for everyone <laughs> that's true and, and i feel like i need to read the second one to see what kind of like thing it is i do wonder if it's like inferring because the next two books are called authority and acceptance mm-hmm. and i really wonder if it's a different trope i really hope it's not a hunger games thing where like hunger games one was about a game the second one was about another game like that stuff it's just no no please yeah, like, yeah. If it's a different type of vehicle for a movie telling this messed up crazy story yeah. i'm all down so uh yeah i'm gonna go and grab the book and fly through it not all three at the same time mm-hmm. or back to back but anyways uh, Portman, good job. I think it just sort of reestablishes her another one yeah. where she's like, you know, she's just not Queen Amidala. Like, you that's think literally that what everyone thinks she can only do. When you look at action stars like Sabrina Weaver or like Charlize Theron in recent years, she, they're like big people. Like yeah. They're tall, they're, mass, yeah. they're a little bit bigger than the normal women, but Portman here, she's like young and she, she's, well, she's pretty young. She's smaller. But and she has she, presence here. Yeah, like her presence is she not carries, so, like, Yeah, like and she's not like this tiny little person. He's like, what are you even yeah, talking she about? She could hold herself like she can in, hold in, herself. In, in, in any scenes. So yeah. which is re- very, very, very good. So yes. So anyway, so, that's yeah. it. We talked long enough. So tell me if you found the thing that he talked about that I didn't know below. Just be cryptic about it, so not <laughs> everyone re- knows what you're talking about. Oh, anyway, right. that is it. This is the before and after for Annihilation. Later.